Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Josh. Welcome to my Facebook Live. I'm going to give you guys some time to get into the broadcast. I really do have an important message for you guys. I know um, I haven't been doing a Facebook, I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while, um, but I want to get you guys in here because I really want to talk about a topic that really is um, important, um, especially on the topic of being lukewarm. So come on into the broadcast. Get as many people in here as possible. Do me a big favor. Get this message out. Share. Let as many people know about this broadcast. Share it. Put it on uh, group pages. Do what you got to do. But also, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, feel free to go to the description box below. There's some links in the description box for you to better engage with Unplug. You can find out ways, or myself, you can find out ways to get involved. You can find, out, find ways to give. Also, you can find ways to get me out there to your city, church, conference, whatever. I would love to come speak on behalf of God uh, for your people. If you listen to this on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, I want to say thank you guys for listening. Feel free to engage. Feel free to look at the description box as well. But if you're watching this live, please do me a favor and get this broadcast out to as many people. This is a very serious topic on the topic of being lukewarm. But let's get right into it. While you guys are sharing, I'm going to get right into my notes because I have a lot of information I want to share with you guys um, that will really help us better understand of living a life with focus, living a life with the intent of leaving a legacy, but living a life focused and consecrated on behalf of God. So let's get right into it. The problem in our culture when it comes to being lukewarm or when it comes to believers specifically is that many people profess to being hot, but are actually lukewarm. The problem in our culture, specifically the Christian culture, that many people profess out of their mouths that they are hot for God, on fire for God, but are really lukewarm. My question to you is, have you truly made a decision? Are you a person right now living hot for God, on fire for God, focused for God, uh, active for God, flourishing for God? Or are you a person who is lukewarm, indecisive, confused, caught between, between two opinions? You got to look inside of your heart and ask yourself, am I true? Truly following Jesus. Like I said last night to the people that came to unplug, it's so sad that many people are following a Jesus that never lived, following a Jesus that never died, following a Jesus that never rose, and they're professing to have such a fire, but don't but haven't really checked their heart to see if they're truly committed. And my question to you today, in the climate that we're in, my question to you is: are you committed? God is not looking for partial commitments or a commitment on Sundays. He's looking for full commitments. That's why my question to you is, have you fully, have you been fully persuaded? Because in the world that we're living in right now, there are a lot of distractions, a lot of things that's coming after us, causing us to be lukewarm, distasteful. The Bible says, he says, I prefer for you to be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spill you out of my mouth. Hotness means on fire, consecrated, set apart, no entanglements with the world. Cold means uh, I, I don't even want nothing to do with God. Pridefulness, hard heartness, I don't want nothing to do with God. But a person who is lukewarm has full knowledge or has a good understanding of, but is still choosing to blend and mix with things in this world. Many people, the reason why they're lukewarm today is because they have no sense of awareness. They have no sense of urgency. They, they, they only know Jesus is Savior, but have forgotten about the most powerful piece of it, of Him being Lord. And many people get so consumed with life and living it abundantly and life and living it lavishly and life and living it for their own selves that they forget that there's an eternity. But they forget that there's a world, uh, uh, there's a life after this. And what happens to most people, they fall into the trap of Satan of causing you to be so consumed with this life that you become prideful of this life. And whatever you hold on here will keep you from going up there. And so my question to you is, are you professing something that you're not living? Are you professing to be on fire for God on your Facebook status, your tweets, your Instagram, professing to be on fire for God in all areas of your life? But truly, if you examine yourself, that you know for a fact you're lukewarm. I have some causes real quick. I got three causes. The first cause is a lack of consecration. The reason why many people profess to being hot, but not really being hot and actually being lukewarm is based upon them having a lack of consecration. See, I tell people, people lose concentration when there is a lack of consecration.
Concentration is what's paramount in life. The life right now in our world is based upon attention. If you look at social media, ads are a place where there's the most attention. The goal is to get most attention in a certain direction. And so what happens is when a person loses focus, when a person loses concentration on God and on Jesus, they begin to lack consecration. And what happens is when a person begins to fixate their eyes on something other than God, they begin to mirror what they're looking. And my question to you is, what do you have before you daily? Because whatever you look upon will determine what type of identity you will exude. And so what happens is when people begin to lose concentration on God, they begin to lack consecration. And when a person lacks consecration, they begin to lack uh, uh, um, they begin to lack the ability to really be on fire for God with the consumption, with, as far as consuming their their culture, their world, to being on fire for God as well. It's so sad that many people are are more consumed with being of the world versus just being in the world. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between being in the world and of the world. Being in the world means that, hey, I, I have no choice. I'm living in this life. I'm in this world. I'm living it. I'm passing through. I'm a pilgrim passing through. I'm in it. But so many people are professing to be of God and of the world. When you're of the world, you're now allowing philosophies, ideologies, and, and life lifestyle habits to be a part of you. And what happens to most people is they allow all these different negative influences to be a part of their consecrated life. And my question and my charge, much more so, my charge to you is to really ask yourself, am I consecrated? Holiness. Holiness without it, no man shall see God. Holiness doesn't mean perfection. Holiness means progression. Holiness means holiness means set apart. Holiness says I'm not entangling myself with anything. My question to you is: Are you living a holy life, a life that's set apart for only God to use, or is the devil getting some of the pie as well? Is the enemy coming in and getting some of your life? And what's sad is that many of us have so many hands in our lives, and we wonder why the pot is lukewarm, and we wonder why we're conforming to the world instead of being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And the reason why many people are not endeavoring to go forward and progress other things of God is because they are not being transformed, but they are allowing culture to conform them. Listen, the culture is supposed to be a byproduct of the Christian, not the Christian, a byproduct of the, byproduct of the culture. So you got to look at yourself and say, am I allowing the true light of God to allow it to light up the world around me that the world will be intrigued, the people that desire to be out of it will be intrigued to follow me as I follow Christ. Listen, I thank you for saying that holiness is still right. And God's not saying perfection, but he's just saying, do you have a sense of awareness mentally saying, you know what? This life is not benefiting me. And so many people are engaging in things and it's destroying them. You got to come to grips in your own self and saying this life that I'm living for the world, this life that I'm living, compromising God is not benefiting me. That's why the Bible says you transform by the renewing of your mind, not the renewing of your emotions. Listen, most people are attached to God emotionally. No, you got to have an in intellectual, mental understanding of the God that you're following. You got to be fully persuaded. Emotions are not persuasive. It's the mind that has to be persuaded. And when the mind is persuaded, the life will transform with it. That's why you got to allow your mind to be renewed in every chapter of your life, in every category of your life, allowing it to determine and allowing it to set you free from those mental traps. So a lack of consecration is what's causing a lot of people to, to, to seemingly feel on fire for God, but are really lukewarm. Consecration says, God, I'm setting my life apart or to only be used by you. God, I'm setting my life to the side for you. You got to ask yourself, who do you love most? Do you love God most? Are you endeavoring to say, God, I want you above everything. God, you're the apple of my eye. You're the treasure that I hold. You are my everything. Consecration says, you know what? I'm cleaning house. Consecration says, I'm going to remove any and everything out of me. Yes, sanctification is the work of... Yes, sanctification is the work... Give me one second. Every day is Yes, it's true that sanctification is the work of God, but consecration is a choice by of man. 
Sanctification is the work of God, but consecration is the choice of man. We got to choose to be consecrated while he's sanctifying our lives. And that's the beauty of the gospel is that, yes, he saves me, but I got to make sure I sustain a level of purity, a level of consecration that ensures that when people look on my life, they will see the handiwork of the Lord. A lack of consecration. The traps of inclusion and compromise have been set. There are preachers, musicians, singers, rappers under the Christian umbrella that are portraying and, and, and allowing to be presented that it's okay to do certain things. Listen, what God stands for, he's not compromising. What God stands for, he's not budging on. I don't care what artist says is okay to listen to what. I don't care what pastor says is okay to watch what. I don't care what anybody says, friend. I don't care what they say is okay to do. You got to make sure you check your heart and to make sure, is it compromising God's word? If it's, if it's, if it's influencing, talking contrary to what God stands for, I can't listen. It's sad that I see a lot of preachers, a lot of people, a lot of uh, musicians and singers in the Christian world are are publicly through their Instagram stories, publicly through their sermons, publicly through their interactions are showing that it's OK. It's not OK. It's so sad that most people follow people than Jesus. Listen, the traps have been set. There's going to be a great fall in the way. Their goal is to make sure that the believer is lukewarm. Their goal is to make sure that you entertain different things. Look at the word entertainment. Entertainment by definition is to enter the detain. Entertainment is a tool used to get you in a, in a zombie-like state, get you into a trance-like state to allow messages and agenda to enter you while your physical body is detained. When you watch TV, sometimes your eyes lock in and you're in a trance. And all of a sudden, the messages in the commercial, the message in the TV shows begin to come into your life because you allowed yourself to be detained. My mom calls it a one-eyed demon. <laughs> my, mom, my mom told me as a child, watch out what you watch on TV because it will detain you while the messages enter you. That's why you got to be very careful what entertains you. Listen, we got to get to a place where we're physically in charge over the course of our lives. The inclusion traps. The compromise traps have been set. And so many of us are allowing ourselves saying, it's okay to listen to this rapper. It's okay to listen to this singer. It's okay to watch this as if there's no messages creeping in as if that's why you got to follow God and don't follow preachers. You got to follow God and not follow musicians. You got to follow God because you got to be able to say, you know what? For God, I live and for God, I die. Number two, the wrong things matter. The reason why we, we have become so lukewarm is because the wrong things matter. The wrong things matter. Meaning that it's sad that the things that matters most to us doesn't matter to God at all. Sometimes the things that matters to us the most doesn't matter to God at all. That means there's a separation, a disconnect. I often ask God to please lay your burdens on my heart. Whatever burdens you, God, lay it on my heart. Because, God, I never want to have a disconnect. I don't want the bulk of my life to be pursuing after something that doesn't matter, to pursue something that doesn't even matter to you. And so many of us, the reason why we compromise and begin to fall our own ways because too many wrong things matter to us. And we got to get to the point that where God matters most, his purpose for us matters most over everything else. And so many people, the wrong things matter to them. They're so consumed with marriage, so consumed with money, so consumed with all these different things that matters to them that they've lost track or have been disconnected even in the professing that they're hot for God. Number three, people are fans instead of observers of fruit. Many people in Christendom are fans more so than observers of fruit. The enemy wants you to become fans. Fanatics, lovers of people, desires of kings, the love of leaders. He wants you to be fans of people so die hard that they become the influencers that leads you into lukewarmness. That's why God said he didn't want you, he didn't call you to be fans. He called you to observe fruit. 
We're not talking about being legalistic and judging and damning people. We're not saying that, but we got to be observers. I'm not going to allow you to influence me if I see that you're lacking fruit. I'm not going to allow you to be my top musician, my favorite preacher, my favorite YouTuber. If you're showing fruit that's contrary, you better be thankful that God is allowing Snapchat and is allowing um, uh, uh, Instagram, is allowing all these different platforms to show us people's fruits. But it's so sad that so many people are more fans than they are observers of fruit. So what happens is they get so consumed with following being fanatics and, oh, my pastor said this or this musician do that. I saw some things in the past couple of weeks that made me feel a certain type of way about certain people. Because I'm like, how can you say you love God, but you allowing this to be expressed vividly on your stories? Listen. People, like you said, people rather follow fame instead of having fruit. You got to ask yourself, what life am I living? Whose life am I following? Because you don't want to become such a fan of somebody that when they fall away, you fall away. There are certain people who are hired for Satan's work. People who are hired to be musicians, to be preachers, to be, and they don't love God. They never did. They have been hired to, that's why the devil says, you can't beat Jesus, join Jesus. So what he's saying is, if I can't beat them, I'm going to join them. And I'm going to set up preachers amongst them. I'm going to set up philosophies around them. And I'm going to allow this thing to be heavy for so long that it lures people away from God. And so many people are so lukewarm that they don't even have a sense that they're in danger. You got to make sure that you're consecrated. You got to make sure that what matters most matters most. And you got to make sure you are an observer of fruit than being a fan of someone. I have seven L's real quick. Seven L's. Seven L's real quick. I'm going to talk about it. Give me one second. Make sure my charge is on. All right, good. I have seven L's of lukewarmness. Seven L's. The process by which Satan allows lukewarmness to be prominent in the church amongst people. And, and my goal for this video is to get you out and but get you into the fire. Get you back on fire for God. Get you back committed to God. Get you back focused with God. Making sure that you get into a place where you stay lit. <laughs> that you stay on fire. That there's no lukewarmness in you. The devil's going to always try to bring buckets around you to, add, to, to put out your fire. But you got to be committed. You got to say, God, no, I'm going to be committed to you seven L's number one Lucifer 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 by definition is light bearer Lucifer is one of the names of Satan Lucifer a form of light. See, the thing about Lucifer is, is that he embodies pride. He was the person of music. He was the one <clears throat> that initiated worship. And so Satan is, 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 is such a, a, a deceiver. That's why you got to ask yourself, what, what, where am I deceived? Because wherever there's a form of light, that form of light leads to darkness. So that's why you got to ask yourself, who is the person, the Pied Piper, the head, the salute, the, the sergeant of this world system. When you understand the character of Satan, you will understand the tricks and the schemes that he portrays. You will understand the wiles. You'll understand the schemes. You'll understand the plots. And when you, but I'm not saying study Lucifer. I'm just saying you got to know the true light so well that when a fake light comes in, a fake form of illumination comes in, you'll know that this way of life is darkness. This way of life is lukewarmness. You got to understand that Lucifer is a deceiver. His objective is to create a culture a world, a system that endeavors to lure us. He is the one that's trying to get you illuminated into darkness. He's giving you a form of light. That's why when you know <clears throat> who this person is, this person who is a light bearer, who's endeavoring to get you like Eve to compromise on what God has told you, he always going to allow a tree in the midst of your life. He's always going to lure you into a place away from God, causing you to think his way. Lucifer is the head of this way of life. Number two, lieutenants or oh, lividness, lividness, lividness. There's a hatred that Lucifer has, a hatred. He hates you and I, despises us. Why, Josh? Why does he hate us so? Because you and I are his replacements.
I said as I unplug a couple of times that the reason why Lucifer hates us so much is because we replaced him. See, Satan was worship. He was drums. He was harp. He was voice. He was song. He was horns. He was everything music. And the moment that he allowed pride to kick him out of heaven and to remove a third of the angels with him, he thought that he was going to design an army against God through the angels that fell with him. But what he didn't know was that God knew beforehand that the Lucifer that he was going to create, even though he created Lucifer, he created Lucifer with a choice, knowing that Lucifer was going to choose because in order for true love to be presented, there has to be an antagonist. There has to be an enemy. Listen, when a young man gets married, all attractive women don't go away. When a young woman gets married, all the attractive men don't go away. There are things in this world that has to be in order to prove Love in order to prove contentment. And so what Lucifer didn't know was that when God replaced him, he replaced him with dirt. <laughs> Imagine this angelic being being replaced by dirt. God said, I'm going to wrap spirit in dirt and their hands are going to sound like drums and a voice is going to sound like horns. There are their, their, their song is going to be so broad that you're going to hate them. He has a lividness, a hatred of you. And when you understand that hatred, you will understand why do I entertain anything that belongs to someone that hates me? Listen, I don't, I want to be far removed from anyone that hates me. If you don't love me, I don't want to be around you. And so many people are around an individual, around a philosophy that hates you. He wants you destroyed. He wants you to forfeit your dependence on God. He wants you to forfeit your development. He wants you to be so separate from God that you'll try to exit execute with no fuel. You'll try to do without no energy. And the Bible says it's not by might, but by my spirit. So the enemy's objective is to get you into your might and get you into your, your own willpower. And God says, you're not going to be able to do it in your own might. You can only do it by the spirit of God. Lividness, hatred. Number three, these two go together. Oh, the next one is lukewarm. Lucifer the head. Lividness is his attitude. Lukewarmness is his goal. His goal is for you to be lukewarm. Now, how does he get you to be lukewarm? You have to understand that there are lieutenants and there's a league. Lieutenants are people who are, or, uh, or lieutenants or uh, 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 sergeants or generals in a kingdom. One thing about Satan he's endeavoring to do like God, he wants to be omnipresent like God. He wants to be everywhere like God. Lucifer, Satan, is not omnipresent. So when people say the devil's messing with me, the devil ain't messing with you. <laughs> the devil is somewhere f f trying to attack someone more powerful. He has he has an industry. He has a culture to lead. But what you must understand is that he has lieutenants and he has a league. He has lieutenants and he has a league of people endeavoring to bring us into a place of lukewarmness. We understand lieutenants. Lieutenants are people who are who are his sons, the people who are who are who are a part of his kingdom, principalities, demonic beings who are who are leading this this charge. And you have to understand up under that lieutenants or those, those or, those, or those sergeants is a league, a league of people. You got to understand he is the commissioner of this league. There's leagues. I mean, there's different areas. There's a, that's why when you go to certain cities, you can feel what type of team is in that city. You can feel what type of agenda is in that city. Some some cities have gambling. Some cities have uh, uh, idolatry. Some cities got these different or greed. They have different layouts or fields to them. And when you understand that there are certain leagues within these cities, that there's lieutenants that govern it with such lividness up under Satan's agenda, then you'll understand that this thing is well organized. Even Jesus said when the Pharisees like he cast out demons by the power of demons, he said, listen, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So he gave us a hint that if Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom will fall. And ladies and gentlemen, if you look out in our world today, you can see that his system, his kingdom is well organized. You will be able to notice that everything that he's doing is well organized. And when you understand there's a league, you'll be a little bit more watchful. 
you will be able to look and see the segregation, see the greed, see the the lust and the uh, uh, the, the, the 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 fears and the and the and the and the atheism. You will begin to see the compromise. You begin to see, and you'll be able to know what leagues are around. Satan, who is Lucifer, a form of light, endeavors to give you a form of illumination that leads you into lukewarmness. You got to understand that he has an attitude of livid, uh, a lividness that he hates us, despises us because we replaced him. You also must understand that his kingdom, his organization is, 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 is up under his focus of making sure that his enemy is lukewarm. He knows a believer who is consecrated, a believer who has full of power, cannot be stopped. Jesus said, I give you power over scorpions. I give you power over Satan. It's so sad that the enemy wants to wash us down into a place where we lack power. And so many people are trying to take cities, trying to help people, but they're living a life with no power. It's by his might. It's by it's not by our might, but by his spirit. And when you understand that, you'll say, God, I don't want to watch TV. God, I want to be in your presence because I know I'm in the middle of a war. And how to what burdens do you have on your heart is the question. What burdens do you have on your heart? When you have a burden for something, you can't be distracted with everything. When you really have a burden for king, the kingdom of God and you have a burden, you don't entangle yourself. What's the point of being so consumed with sex and being consumed with money when this stuff is going to pass away? I got to make sure that I'm invested in something that's eternal because I know for a fact that this life down here cannot compare to forever. And when you understand that he has lieutenants, and he has a league governed by these owners with the objective of lukewarmness and the believer. You will begin to understand that he has a layout. Layout represents a plan. He has a layout. His layout is simple. To get people off of God. To get people in idolatry. To get people consumed in what doesn't matter. To get people losing concentration. When that leads into a lack of consecration. He knows that there's a layout with lures. He knows how can I lay out such a plan. Lay out such a picture. Even when Jesus was in the wilderness, he tried to lay out a plan. He said, man, shoot, man. Turn that bread into, turn that stone into bread, bro. Come on, man. Turn it. Feed yourself. Sustain yourself. He also said, let me take you to the top and, and, and show you all the kingdoms. I'll give that to you. He began to talk about, you know, jump off the cliff and won't God come? So the devil loves to tempt you into providing for yourself, tempt you into testing God and tempt you into, into him being your Lord. He wants to tempt you into fulfilling for yourself. He wants you to be not dependent on God. That's why he wants you to turn that stone into bread. He wants you to say, no, turn that hard situation into something for yourself. Turn this hard. You go change this hard situation. You turn this into bread. You turn this into a career to feed you. That's why the Bible says that Jesus is the bread of life. That he's the one that God gives us our daily bread. Why do you think that there's two types of bread? The bread who is Christ, which means he's the only one one that can satisfy our soul through time into eternity and then why do you say why do you see that God talks about he'll give you our his daily bread daily bread means I'm only going to eat the bread for today so many people are still trying to eat bread from yesterday when God's saying leave what's in yesterday and yesterday and be able to eat from the new mercies and new grace that are presented today He's our daily bread. It's there's there, there's a, we're not supposed to provide for ourselves. Number two, he wants you to to tempt God, test God, meaning that look, content, meaning let me sin because of grace. Oh, God will send angels to catch me if I fall. You know, no, 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 no. See, he wants you to step into situations to tempt God, to test God. And he says, man, I'm not going to jump. He said, yes, I have power to get a legion of angels to come get me. But he says, I'm not going to tempt the Lord thy God. And what happens is many people are stepping into danger zones, begging God to save you. There's so many people that thought God was going to save them. Yes, he may have saved their soul, but you still stuck with the consequence. And last but not least, he wants you to become profitable in his life. He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. They'll be yours. 
And Jesus was like, I'm the king of kings. <laughs> I already own everything. And it's so sad that we don't understand who we are in Christ. And the layout has been set. And his lures are latching on to us. And so many people are being lured from around the hedge of God. Lured into situations. And they're professing to be on fire. But are really lukewarm. And my challenge to you is, is to check your heart. To check to see who do you serve? Who do you love most? Because so many people are really, many believers are not converts. God cares about conversion. Fruit bearing. My question to you is, are you lukewarm? We live in such a world right now, man, where the separation is being made. The wheat from the tear. The remnant from the remains. Jesus don't care about numbers. If he did, he would have 5,000 disciples. He don't care about numbers. All you preachers, pastors who may be watching this, from the prominent to the beginner, church size don't matter. If it mattered, then our cities would have been changed. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is considered one of the Bible belts. I went to school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is another Bible belt. Churches everywhere. The state of your city is a reflection of the state of your church. Or your churches. If your city is not being changed, then your churches are lukewarm. God is looking for people to be on fire. And I promise you if 5,000 people at your church or 20 people at your church were really on fire, we would notice a change in our communities. We got to get to a place where we light ourselves on fire and say, God, for you I live, for you I die. We got to get to a place where we say, you know what, God, I don't care about this life. I don't care about it, God. You my everything and I love you more than anything. God, I'm going to follow you into the end. I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not going to. I don't care if I'm alone, God, because if I'm alone with you, I am fully. I'm in good company. But you got to look at yourself and say, man, uh, uh, I'm, listen, you got to look at that sex and be like, yo, I'm done sleeping around. You got to look at that pornography and be like, I'm done. You got to be done with everything that's making you, not, that's not strifting in you. You got to be done with everything that's keeping you from God. You got to be done with that stuff, yo. You got to be done with it because, listen, when you stand before your maker, you're going to be held accountable. And God's going to be like, you allow these lures, you allow these lieutenants, you allow all these things to keep you from me, please. I'd rather for you to be hot or cold. He said, I'd rather for you to be cold. Don't even don't even talk my name out your mouth. If your, heart, if your heart's not committed, don't say you love me in your heart. He says, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God don't care about what you do on Sunday and say in your worship. So he don't care. He looks at your heart and you got to look at your heart and be like, am I really for God? Am I really following him or am I just lukewarm? Listen, make a decision. Listen, make a decision. Don't let's make a decision today. Who are you going to follow? Because the, the, the fruit, the, 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 the fruit is evident and God don't care about you can't pay God off. You can't be, you can't, you can't perfect attendance God off. You can't pay God off with some tithes. You can't, you can't, uh, 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 uh perfect, perfect, uh, um, um, attendance with God. Oh, I go to church. I don't care about going to church. He says, are you a vessel that I can dwell in? Are you a house that I can sleep in? Are you a person that I can walk with? <clears throat> I'm telling you right now, it's time out for being lukewarm. It's time out. It's time for us to be committed. I don't care if you lose friends. I don't care if you lose family or you lose money, lose opportunity. God is your provider. The one of the number one things that keeps people from being on fire for God are fears. The reason why many people are afraid to fall through God because they love their jobs too much. They love their friends too much. They love their sex too much. They love their sins too much. That's why they can't follow God. You got to let go of all those fears. Say, God, you are my source. You are, <clears throat> you are my provider. And I'm going to follow you into the end. That's my question. That's my charge to you. Is this weekend, look at your heart. Look at your heart and say, God, why am I not following you the way I need to? The enemy knows how on fire you are. The bigger the bucket of water is bring, brought to you, it's the level of your fire. 
That means the greater the resistance you have, the greater the fire you have. They're going to use your family to put out your fire. They're going to use your friends to put out your fire. They're going to use influencers to put out your fire. You got artists showing they listen to these type of songs. You got artists going to these concerts, these prominent Christian musicians. You got these preachers doing sermons with, with, with Kendrick and all these different things. And, 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 and you wondering why. No, no knock to them because maybe they're distracted. Maybe they lured away. I'm not knocking them, but my thing is the fruit is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. We got, we can't be publicly telling people to do things when we know it's wrong. Real quick, in order to avoid the lukewarmness, you got to look upward, you got to look inward, then you got to look outward. You got to look upward, inward, outward. Upward, inward, outward. You got to look upward. God, I repent. <clears throat> God, what you got for me? God, I repent. I'm confessing. I'm looking upward. Then you got to look inward. You got to look inside and be like, what's in me that's not connecting to you? Then you got to look outward and follow your mission. You got to be focused. In order to not fall into lukewarmness, you got to be a fo you got to be focused on your purpose. You don't listen. You got to be too productive to sin. Too tired to sin. You got to be so focused on your life that you you know that you're in a war. That's why the Bible says those who've been called by God do not entangle themselves with civilian affairs. For their joy or their heart is to please the one that enlisted them. That that since we have been enlisted, going to the altar to follow God was not the signature or the joining of a, of, of a membership or to a club. No, it was joining an army. It was joining an army. We're supposed to be a part of an army now and when you're enlisted you do not entangle yourselves with civilian affairs you don't entangle yourself with when I'm going to get married when I'm not going to get married you know you don't, you don't entangle yourself about how much money you don't entangle yourself with civilian affairs for your joy is to please the one that enlisted you because when you look upward you see God clearly you look inward you begin to see what's not right and what needs to be different when you look outward, you're focused because you understand when I look outward, I'm looking towards a mark of the high calling. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm moving somewhere. I challenge you today to self-examine and say, you know what? God, I repent. I want you to get rid of your cable if you need to. I want you to get rid of your internet if you need to. I want you to get away, uh, get rid of some friends. You need to do what you got to do to sanctify yourself. Consecrate yourself. Remove yourself from entangling yourself with the world. I pray this message was a blessing to you, man. Listen, we must avoid lukewarmness. Because I talked about it last night on Unplugged. Make sure you check out those videos. They're available on YouTube. <clears throat> I talked about how um, on Mark chapter 4 where it talks about people fall away from God because of, of the attacks that come from the word. Don't allow persecution to cause you to be lukewarm. Allow persecution to keep you committed so that your commitments will be persuasive to people who want Jesus. You got to say, I'm going to take on this persecution because I know they're watching me. I'm going to take on this persecution because I know they're looking. I'm going to take it on. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose everything. I'll lose whatever I need to lose for the gospel's sake because I know he's my provider. And when you stay committed to God and you on fire for God, it'll inspire other people. That's why people don't want to be around fire because, because they're, gonna, they're afraid they're going to get burnt. They want to be around people that's lukewarm because they want to listen to this song. They want to do this. They want to do that. Listen, you got to make a change and make a decision. I pray this message was a blessing to you, man. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, thank you guys so much for watching me live. Get this message out to as many people. Share, share, share. I really do believe that the content was powerful. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching. I'm not watching it live, but you're watching on YouTube. Go into the description box below. There's ways for you to give, get involved, or to get me out to your city. Also, if you're listening on Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, thank you guys so much for listening. If you're watching this on Facebook Live and you want to get all of my messages in downloadable audio form, you can find me at Joshua Ezzy at on SoundCloud. You can find me on SoundCloud. Um, uh, SoundCloud, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. Um, feel free to give. Propel about to start back up. Work at elementary school. About to get going. We will love your support to get us. We this is our second year, and we're the kids are excited. We're excited. Uh, so feel free to help us out there. If you want to bring me out to your city, your church, your conference, your whatever, you feel free to bring me out. Go to mycoachjosh.org or iamunplug.com. Book me. I would love to come out to your school. I'll be in West Virginia September fifth. Um, there's some other states dates that are tentative uh, but uh, feel free to bring me out i would love to come um i think that's it i love you guys see you next time